Three important things for us. Number one is to prioritize the spirit. Prioritize the spirit. You know, in the early church, the Holy Spirit was so important. So important. In Acts chapter 19, when Paul went to Ephesus, the Bible tells us when you read from verses 1 to 7, he met some 12 disciples there. And the first question he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we haven't even heard that there's any Holy Ghost. He said, unto what then were you baptized? They said, we only know John's baptism. And he explained to them about the Lord and talked to them about the Holy Ghost. And laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And 12 of them began to speak in tongues and prophesy. Just to him. First thing he asked him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You have to prioritize the ministry of the Holy Ghost this year, 2023, like you never did in your life before. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit made you. You have to understand. He created you. Go to Job chapter 33. Verse 4. Read. Read it out. One to go. Yes. He's the one who made you. He made you. I can show you several verses in the scriptures. You discover he's the maker. In the Godhead, you talk about Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the one. He's the performer. He's the performer. He's the one that actually fashioned you. And the Bible says his delight was with the sons of men. In other words, he always wanted to live with us. He always took delight in us and the father fulfilled his dream when he gave him to us to live in us did you know you're so important to the holy spirit you're so important to the holy spirit this year prioritize the holy spirit and his ministry in your life many have received the holy spirit but they ignore him He's not part of their day. He's not part of their considerations. They act like he doesn't live. They act like he's a mere experience, but he's more than an experience. But this year, make that decision. The Holy Spirit is going to be more than an experience to you. He's a person. And every Christian, everyone who has received the Holy Spirit must now recognize him and fellowship with him. He wants to talk to you all the time. He wants to teach you. He wants to show you the way of the kingdom. Let me show you something he's going to do for you. Go to the book of Proverbs. Did you know his wisdom? Let me show you from verse 20. His wisdom. He's the wisdom of God. Go to verse 20. Proverbs chapter 8. Wisdom. No, no. Chapter 8 from verse 20. It says, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the parts of judgment. Why? That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. Did you see that? This is what he wants to do for you in 2023. Look at it again from verse 20. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the parts of judgment. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. 
He is the voice of God that talks to you. He is the voice of God that gives you guidance. That gives you instruction. That tells you where to go. What to say. What to write. He wants to lead you to inherit substance. If you will let him, this world with its fake poverty, this world with man-made poverty, because poverty in the world is not natural, it's man-made. You will never be a victim of man-made poverty if you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you let him guide you, he says, I lead in the way of righteousness that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Think what he will do for you in 2023 if you listen to him. Listen to him. Say, I will listen to him. Say, I will listen to him. Yes. But if you have not received the Holy Spirit, you've got to receive him into your life. You have to first receive him. First is to be born again, to receive Christ into your heart. Second, receive the Holy Spirit. To live in you. And he tells us to constantly be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh boy, it's wonderful. So number one is prioritizing the ministry of the Holy Spirit. All right? Number two, prioritizing the Word of God. The Word. The Word of God. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Look what it says. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Did you see that? Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Not in small amounts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Have the word in you abundantly. You've got to study it. You've got to have it in your heart. Meditate on the word. Give attention to it. Say this year, I will give attention to the word of God like never before. Now, you know, you, you want to see God do something that is never done in your life? You should be ready to do something that you have never done before. All right? And you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. And number three. What's number one? Tell me. Prioritizing what? Great. And number two is what? The word. And number three, the name. You're going to learn to use the name. See, most of us have used the name of Jesus for situations, certain situations. We think it's something that we do when we are really in some dire need. When something is serious, that's when we need to call the name of Jesus. But if you live your life like that, Progress will be slow. Changes will be slow. You want to see your life grow fast, quickly, and bigly. Then you have to do it as the word says. You got to do it as the word says. What does it say? I'll show it to you. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. What does it say? Read for me. Want to go? Whatsoever? No, no, no. I got to hear you read it. Want to go? That's remarkable. Look at it. And whatsoever, not some things. Not sometimes. 
Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You'll be amazed at the changes that will take place. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at the results. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And this is why I teach about the Lord Jesus because many just call him Jesus. They don't know him. They just say Jesus. No, when you talk about him, it's different from when you talk to him. When you talk to him, Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Not, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You don't know him. After his resurrection, nobody called him Jesus. They said, Lord. They all called him Lord. Like I said, talking about him is different. Like I'm talking about him and I say, I'm talking about Jesus. Yes. But when you talk to him, you've got to call him Lord. Lord Jesus. When you talk to him, and when you sing of him, call him Lord. Respond correctly to him. Address him correctly. You will be amazed at the results. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Say, does that matter? Oh, if you ever do you know who we're talking about he's your creator he created you oh you say I, I thought you said the Holy Ghost made the Holy Ghost made you Jesus created you there's a difference I will use another, another day to discuss that. But if you study from the book of Genesis, it distinguishes clearly between the created man and the man that was formed. See, your spirit was created by God. Your body was formed from the dust to the ground. So the outward man was framed into shape. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. But your spirit was created by the word, the spoken word. When he spoke, you came into being. But you needed to be formed into shape. And that was the work of the Holy Ghost. You still out there? Okay. So, when you talk of him, Remember who he is. You pray to him, address him as Lord. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Blessed be the Lord. You want to thank him right now? Thank him right now. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year. I am going to be so prolific in 2023. I'm going to be prolific in every way. In 2023. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead and pray, offering thanks to God. 